None of the articles of Christendom will ever tell me. None of the creeds of Christendom will ever sufficiently declare it, people. None of the confessions that have been written will make it known. All traditions are going to fail us. There is only one place to go if you want to know how, and that's the Word, the Word, the Word, and nothing but the Word. Who can tell me the Word? Ephesians chapter 1. Look at it. Ephesians 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and knowledge in the, revel in the knowledge of it, revelation and the knowledge of him. Verse 18. That the eyes of your what? Being what? That's the only way you're going to get it. If you want eyes of understanding that are lightened, you've got to come back to the Word and to his Son, Jesus Christ. That ye may know, verse 18, not question, but doubt, and doubt, but that you may know what is the hope of God's calling. That's the mystery. And that you may know what the riches of the glory of God's inheritance is in the saints. People, the only way you'll ever get to know that is to come back to the Word, coming back to Jesus Christ. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of God's power to you also who believe? The exceeding greatness of God's power to you who did what? Believe. According to the working of God's mighty power. Who can tell me the word through his son Jesus Christ? You will never know God or Jesus Christ, until you know the Word. The Word of God is the will of God. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 10, look at it. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. That ye might walk worthy of what? The Lord. You might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work, and growing up, increasing is growing up in the knowledge, in the knowledge of whom? If you want to grow up in the knowledge of God, you've got to grow up in the knowledge of His Word. For the Word of God is the will of God. Strengthened, verse 11. Strengthened with what? All might according to his, God's glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering, with joyfulness. Verse 12, giving thanks unto whom? Who hath made us meet. And the word meet is adequate. God, who hath made us adequate to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has made us adequate. He has made us adequate to enjoy our share fully, is the word partaker. To enjoy our share fully of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13. Who hath, past tense, delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us. The word translated is given us citizenship. Citizenship. That's how it's used in the Sanskrit. That's right. He has given us citizenship in the kingdom by the work of his dear Son. In whom, verse 14, we have redemption. Through his blood is omitted in the text. 
But then comes the word forgiveness, which is the word remission of sin. In whom we have redemption and we have the remission of sins. You see, people, all of man's impressions, all of man's beliefs, all of man's inferences, and all of man's conclusions must themselves be judged and evaluated in the light of the integrity and accuracy of the Scriptures. Nothing ever takes the place of the revealed Word of God. Look at Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. For the word of God is what? That means it's living. The word quick is living. As long as you're living, you're quick. When you quit being quick, you're dead. For the word of God is living. It's the word of God. Not our creeds, not our confessions, not our traditions, but it's the word of what? God that's living. The word of God that's living. And it's powerful. The word of God is powerful, and that word is energetic. And the word of God is sharper, sharper, above any two-edged sword. Gillette or Wilkerson, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joint and marrow. And the word of God, people, is the discerner. And the word discerner is the word critic. The word of God is the critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. For centuries, men have been the critic of the word. Men have judged the word. They tear it apart. They say how terrible it is. If you're going to be here on Tuesday night, I think is when they want me to do a night of research to show you how we work the Word, I will take you to some scriptures and show you how the critics have laughed at the Word of God, but I will show you how accurate the Word of God is if they'd have just had the brains to read the stuff accurately. Man has always set himself up as the critic of the Word. The Word of God says that it's the critic of every man. It's the Scriptures that's the critic of man. No man is a critic of God's Word. The Word is the critic of every man, even to the end that it's so sharp that it can divide joints, mouth. So thoughts and intents of what? That's why through the years I have declared to our people that the Scriptures are not our primary rule of faith and practice, which I learned the Heidelberg Catechism. That's a lie. That's catechism, ain't the word. I have declared to our people that for those of us in the way ministry, the Word of God is our only not our primary, it's our only, what? Rule for faith and practice. We have none other but the Word. Try. <laughs> That's why we endeavor to use scriptural terminology, giving the ev evidence of Scripture in the words of Scripture only. And people, when it comes right down to the fine points of the word, it is never a question of my understanding of what God means, but it's simply a question of my believing what God says. If I don't understand it, does it make any difference as long as God said it?